All right, let's do um, an autoregressive procedure in R. Uh, I'm going to use a data set uh, other than the COVID-19 data set. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average data set, the history, which is uh, on the web page. Um, I'll begin uh, simply by clearing the memory. Um, so RM, if I can figure out how to type here, RM uh, list equals ls paren. Uh, very good. Uh, I'm going to create the data set DAO. I'm just going to call it DAO. Um, read dot um, CSV. Choose, whoops, file choose. Um, paren and then header equals T. And the dialog box pops up uh, over on this screen. Um, let me find that data set. DAO.CSV. Very good. Uh, now uh, what I need to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach it. Um, there we go. Uh, now what I need to do is uh, load a number of libraries. Uh, so let me go over here to the packages. I want to load car. Um, there it's loading car. Um, I want to load forecast. Uh, if you don't have these uh, in your um, library file in R, you're going to have to load them from the CRAN site. Um, I want to load ggplot2. Uh, I want to load LME4. Um, I want to load a zoo. Uh, um, and what else do I need here? Uh, I need library. Um, okay, I think that's good. Um, all right, so I've attached DAO. Let's go ahead and view DAO. Uh, it is a largest data set. Air in view, that's because I uh, didn't capitalize view. And there we go. I have some extraneous variables there on the end. I'm going to ignore those. Okay, so uh, let's begin. We're going to plot um, uh, the close uh, against Dow or against day. There we go. Uh, over on the right hand side. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so now we've got that squared away. Uh, you can look at the history of the Dow here from its inception back in the 1800s. Uh, and you can see that growth of the Dow has been exponential. So uh, if you're invested in the stock market, uh, that's a good thing. All right, uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a time series. Um, and that's simply going to be uh, close.ts. Um, so I'm defining this new uh, file called close.ts. Uh, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the time series function, so simply ts uh, times close. Very good. 
Uh, now I'm going to use uh, partial, the partial autocorrelation function, so PACF, uh, and I'm going to apply that to close dot ts. So I'm applying that uh, partial autocorrelation function to my um, data set. And there you, on the right hand side you can uh, see what that uh, time series looks like, what the lags look like at any rate, and you can notice right away that there's a rather large lag uh, right at the beginning, so that's obviously um, the close of the Dow on one day is uh, highly correlated with the close on uh, the subsequent day. Uh, so now I'm going to just uh, create some lags, uh, and I'm just going to copy them from over here. So now lag close, um, uh, lag one close is uh, the lag uh, coming out of the close time series, and it's a minus one, so I'm correlating uh, the current day is close with the close from the previous day. Um, and I can do the same thing with uh, a lag 2 close. So I'm going to look at the lag on the subsequent day. Very good. Um, Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data set which uh, um, has all of these lags in it. So uh, I'm creating this data set. It's called lag data uh, and it's uh, the time series dot intersect. So I'm looking at the intersection between uh, these various uh, variables. So I have my close TS, uh, my lag one uh, close, my lag two close, and I'm uh, saying that that is a data frame. Uh, so now what I can do, uh, after I've done that, I can run the summary command. Uh, and I'm going to look at the summary of the linear model of close.ts as a function of lag one close um, plus lag to close. Okay, it gives me a warning uh, message and it indicates that I have a perfect fit. Uh, and that's one of the issues that I've been having with using R to do these sorts of things. Um, what ends up happening is that for some reason uh, it's burning through all of my degrees of freedom, and I have no degrees of freedom left over for the error term, so we're going to have to figure out a way to work around that. Um, but uh, I've, uh, if you look at this, it has given me some information, uh, so it's giving me uh, what the minimum value for the residuals are. These are the error terms. Um, and then uh, uh, the first quartile, median, third quartile, and the max value. Uh, and then it's giving me coefficients. It's unable to compute that for the second lag. Um, it does do it for the uh, lag with the first. Uh, so what this obviously means is I have zero degrees of freedom left over for the error term, uh, and therefore I can't perform any statistical tests. All right, so uh, let's move on from there. Um, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try something else. Um, I'm going to uh, create a new um, model. I'm going to call it FIT. FIT1. Uh, so I'm looking in the linear model of close, the close time series against day plus lag 1 plus lag 2, and I don't have a lot of optimism for that. Okay, and I can now look at the summary for that. So summary uh, fit one and let's see what it says uh, well here I get my coefficients right so um, I get my intercept uh, the value of the the intercept or the slope uh, with respect to day um, and then the lag one close and of course I can't compute any of those R squares I get a perfect fit uh, so the model is clearly over described there's something about the way R is computing these autocorrelated error terms that uh, is different from the way SAS uh, does that. Uh, let's try something else. Uh, let's create a second model. Um, and in this model, uh, 
I'm going to have the close as a function of day and just one lag rather than two lags. And let's see if that gets us any closer. So let's look at uh, now. This is uh, fit two. And uh, we still have an R squared that's equal to one. Okay, so uh, that would indicate a perfect fit. And somehow I know that that's not uh, a true statement. Um, let's look at the ANOVA for uh, the second model. So ANOVA fit two. Um, and it basically uh, gives shows us that we have one degree of freedom for day, one degree of freedom for the lag, one close. And we get 37,000 degrees of freedom for the residuals, so I'm, it's not exactly clear to me what's happening here. Uh, but you'll notice that the sum of squares for the residuals is essentially zero. Okay, so there, there is something uh, odd going um, on here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up library uh, T-series. Okay, um, and now uh, let's do this. Let's fit another model. I'm going to call this uh, zero 01. And then let's look at a summary of fit zero 01. And what do we get there? So we get uh, an intercept and we get a standard error estimate. Um, uh, notice what I've done there in that in that statement. Um, I'm using uh, a different procedure now called ARIMA, uh, so autoregression um, uh, with moving averages, and uh, I'm regressing my uh, time series, so the value of the close in a time series. So I'm ignoring the day command. It's it's embedded in there because these close values are sequential, and I've created a time series with those. Um, and then as X reg, I have days. So there is no lag associated with this. So this is just the straight, um, essentially just the straight regression looking at intercept and uh, the value of the close. And you can see that the Dow over the history of 30,000 days or whatever it is, is going up by about 0.34 points per day. All right. Um, uh, let's create another model now, uh, and I'm going to again use the ARIMA function. Um, yeah, I will say that it was quite a challenge to find the ARIMA package uh, and get it embedded in my package of R here. So uh, if you're having difficulty finding it, let me know, uh, and I'll give you a hint on, or I'll, I'll dig back through my notes and figure out how I did it. Uh, so at any rate, here's the Rima, uh, and I'm looking at close, uh, X regression is day, and now I have this order and uh, a couple of variables here, a couple of parameters, 2, 1, and 0, um, and those refer to the number of lags uh, that I'm going to use and uh, the moving average, so I'm indicating that I don't want it to really use a moving average. Um, now I am going to look at a, a lag of, I'll go up to two lags here. Um, and I, the, the distance of a lag should only be one time unit. Um, so um, there's that. Uh, let's look at a summary for uh, this model and see what it provides. See what it provides us. Okay, so now I have an autoregressive uh, variable one and autoregressive variable 2, and then my uh, my slope, and you'll notice what's happened to the slope uh, when I take the autoregressive parameters into account, and it has improved, right? Um, so uh, that all looks good. Uh, let's see if we can um, improve this a little bit more. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, create um, a time series for uh, the day variable. Uh, so I'm using the TS, the time series command, with the variable day to create a time series of day. I know it, it is already a time series. Um, and for some reason, maybe if I move my cursor over there, it'll work. There we go. Um, so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, um, file called 
uh, lag data to a new data set called lag data two, and and this uh, data set is going to consist of the intersect of close, uh, the daytime series, uh, lag one close, and lag two close. Um, and I'm going to try something else here as well. I'm going to try create yet another data set, lag data three, uh, and that's going to. I'm going to use the C bind command here. So column bind. I'm going to bind the value of close time series, the day time series, lag one close and lag two close. So I've uh, done this basically in two different ways here. Um, and now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fit. Uh, yet another model here. So fit, um, and now I'm using the auto ARIMA command instead of just ARIMA. Uh, and if I recall correctly, the ARIMA command is a subfunction of auto ARIMA. So if you look for um, the auto ARIMA function, um, you'll probably have better luck. Uh, so these are commands within a different package, and I simply don't recall which package they were embedded in. All right, so here I'm uh, doing the auto arima, uh, and I'm using lag data three. Uh, so that's this uh, combined with this uh, matrix here with close, uh, the close time series, day time series, lag one and lag two. Um, and uh, as the x variable, I'm using um, lag um, uh, lag data three as the data set. Uh, and I'm using the variable uh, day times ts or day dot ts. So the time series is the x variable, um, and then my um, y variable is close, uh, and it's going to automatically search for lags for me. So I'm not specifying how many lags I want. Okay, so now let me uh, just do the summary. Uh, fit six, fit zero six. Uh, and here we get one, one, uh, the model is built with just one lag, um, and it gives us Akaiki's information uh, criterion values, and those are obviously huge, uh, much larger than anything you would normally see, but then this is a data set that has uh, 30 or 40,000 lines of uh, data in it, so it's a lot of, a lot of data. And of course, if you recall from looking back at this previous one of our previous graphs here, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, if you look at that, you realize right away that it's not linear. And what we're trying to do here is fit a line to that, which is uh, clearly silly. Uh, if anything at all, we should probably be trying either an exponential function or some kind of power function, uh, and or at the very least, we should be trying some sort of polynomial uh, fit. All right, uh, but at any rate, what uh, we've done is we've we fit this now and we've improved uh, the model with these autoregressive functions. Uh, and what I want to do now is simply to check, uh, and this is another um, uh, command which is uh, pretty useful. So check residuals, make sure I spelled that right, um, and then a fit 06. And this is going to produce for us uh, another figure here. Uh, it may take a moment for this thing to pop up. There we go. Uh, there's the first graph. There's the second one. And there's a third one that's going to pop up in just a moment. Okay, and it and it gives us a number of uh, a number of. Um, uh, results down here at the bottom. So uh, it gives us this uh, Jung box test, um, uh, and it gives us for the model degrees of freedom we have two. It's used a total of 10 lags. So uh, one of the advantages of using this auto arima is that we're not burning through those degrees of freedom. Uh, we're not over describing the model. Um, but it does, uh, it, it, the model is highly significant. Um, and uh, so it's a pretty basic model, right, with the, there's no moving average embedded in there. It's just the lags, one day and two day lags and so on. Um, but it is going out to a total of 10 lags. 
Uh, and you can see if you look in this top figure over here what's going on. This is day since inception. So you can see that we're about 35,000 days or 38,000 days into the history of the Dao. Um, and you'll notice that initially at least uh, the model fits pretty tight. So these are the residuals around the regression line. And obviously things blow up as we get to the present day. And, and uh, part of that is a scale problem, obviously, because the Dow Jones is now in the 30,000 point neighborhood, and uh, back in the day it was uh, only a small fraction of that. So part of that is a scale uh, phenomenon. The other part of it, though, is that uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is much less predictable now than it was in the past, and that's uh, because of all of the economic forces that are at play. And you can see here what's happened. Uh, in the Trump presidency is that it's just absolutely blown up. That's what those extremely large uh, residuals are all about. Uh, here is uh, the autocorrelation function, right, the ACF, uh, as a function of lag. And uh, you'll notice that the highest autocorrelations are within one or two days of the closing of the Dow. So uh, the Dow on the Dow close on any one particular day is uh, is a um, is a function of what it was the day before or what it was two days before. So it, it's obviously autocorrelated. Uh, and then here, if we look at residuals, um, uh, this is number on this axis and then the sizes of those residuals. Uh, most of the residuals are essentially zero, but right in, if you look at recent times, they're obviously spread out. So this graph here is just another way of looking at what we have going on up here. All right, so uh, you're certainly welcome to play uh, with these auto uh, regressive models if you'd like. Um, I still have a lot to learn with how R is handling these things. Uh, it's not free and easy, or it doesn't come uh, naturally to me here in R. It's uh, pretty straightforward in SAS, but then uh, we don't have uh, the ability to work with SAS at the moment, so we're stuck with R. Uh, if I figure more out, I will certainly make that. Uh, that code available to you. I will post the code that I used here uh, on the web page and uh, feel free to play with it. Uh, I will not ask you for a homework assignment on this. Uh, if you would like, uh, it would be uh, fun to look at uh, the COVID data. You can uh, download that off the web page um, and try your hand at building this auto ARIMA model with the COVID data for CMO and see how that looks. Very good. Talk to you guys later.